Hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we'll take up a problem from method of images. Now this question is present in IE Rudov and, all, and it also appeared in KVPY 2021. So before we discuss this problem, we'll analyze a basic situation in which method of images is actually used. Okay guys, so this is how the basic situation looks like. So basically we have an infinite conducting sheet and let's say the equation of the plane is z equals zero. Okay, so basically x-axis is uh, along this line and y-axis is along this line over here. And at some distance z equals plus d, we keep a positive point charge plus q. And now the problem is that we need to figure out the electric field and potential uh, at any general point because of this plus q charge and the infinite sheet combination. Okay. Oh yeah. And also there's one more thing. This, uh, this infinite sheet is actually grounded. So the potential everywhere on the sheet is actually zero. Okay. So now the problem is that we need to figure out uh, the electric field and potential at any general point X, Y, Z. So this is the main problem statement. So now let's analyze the electric field line. So this is the conducting plane. So in this diagram towards our left is the conducting plane. So potential everywhere is zero. Now, uh, as this is a conductor, we know that in electrostatic situation, the electric field lines must terminate perpendicularly to its surface. And as we can see from the electric field diagram, the electric field lines converge perpendicularly onto the surface. Okay guys, so the, now the way we tackle this problem is that let's say we draw the side view of the situation. So this is our plane z equals zero. And this is where our plus q charge is at a distance of d from our conducting plane. So method of images actually says that this situation over here, we can solve it by considering this infinite plane as a plane mirror and taking the image of this plus q charge. We have to consider the mirror image at a distance d on the other side of the conducting plane and keeping a charge whose magnitude is the same, but the sign is opposite, meaning we have to keep a charge of minus q at this particular point. Now we can actually forget about this conducting plane and we can treat these two charges as simply two charges kept in space in vacuum and we can write the electric field and potential at any point in space. But uh, there is an important thing you guys need to keep in mind that is that we can only write the electric field and potential for points uh, that lie above this plane. Okay, or basically z greater than zero. And the reason for that is uh, for the regions uh, below this conducting plane, we are actually involving an additional charge minus q over here. But this charge is not really present there in reality, right? We are just bringing this charge for our convenience. So uh, if you bring the charge minus q here, then the actual field here will change because of the presence of this minus q. So yeah, this is something that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so yeah, now it's pretty simple. So you can easily write the electric field and potential at point P using Coulomb's law, right? So, but in the current problem that we are discussing, we are actually trying to figure out the force on this plus Q charge. And that we can f figure out by using Coulomb's law. So that uh, force of attraction comes out to be K Q1 Q2 divided by the distance between them squared. And this force is attractive in nature. So this is the uh, force in the case of this, this situation where we have a conducting plane and plus Q charge. You can easily verify that the reason that this image uh, method of images works is if you consider some random point on our conducting plane, uh, let's, let's call the point as point A. Uh, you can clearly see that the distance of point A from the plus Q charge and the distance of point A from the minus Q charge are equal. And therefore, if you write down the potential, it'll be KQ by R minus KQ by R, which will result in zero. And this is true for any point on the conducting plane and therefore this solution actually satisfies our boundary condition and if you guys remember our boundary condition was that every point on the conducting plane must have zero potential and that's the reason why this solution actually works okay so now uh, now let's go into our current problem in which we have two conducting planes so even in this case the idea remains the same we have to satisfy uh, the boundary conditions and here the boundary condition is that everywhere on this conducting plane and everywhere on this conducting plane the potential has to be zero Right now, let's say though, uh, if there was only this conducting plane present, then this, then all we had to do was place a minus Q charge at a distance of D on the other side, right? And if only this conducting plane was present, then we had to keep a minus Q charge on the other side of the plane, exactly like the first situation. But this, if you guys observe, let's take this vertical plane, this plus Q and minus Q charge together have zero potential contribution uh, at each point on the conducting plane. But this minus Q charge actually ruins it, right? Uh, if you consider any point A on the conducting plane, because of these two charges, it will be zero potential at A, but because of this charge, there, there will be some negative potential at point A, which means this, solution is not complete 
right okay so now if i keep a plus q charge over here uh, that is basically at a distance of d on this side then as you can see in this situation the net potential at point a is zero because uh, this negative potential due to this charge will now be cancelled out by the potential positive potential due to this side and by symmetry we can also see that the boundary conditions will be satisfied for a point b on the horizontal plane as well so therefore we can finally conclude that this is the correct solution again remember guys we can only talk about the electric field and the potential in the region where our source charge is kept and which in this case is this particular region right we cannot talk about the electric field at these points over here there we have added imaginary charges for our convenience so now it's easy to write the force on plus q charge there will be an attraction force due to this minus q let's call it f and there'll be an attractive force towards the left let's call it f again and there'll all there'll be a repulsive force along the diagonal of the square so if i call this distance as a then the diagonal is root 2 times a so the force becomes halved right because the uh, as distance is double the force is now half so so the repulsive force is going to be f by 2 so the resultant of these two equal vectors is root 2 f uh, and it is along the angle bisector so the resultant force is going to be root 2 minus half times f towards the center of the square which is o now f was nothing but the force of attraction between these two charges so that would be kq divided by 2d squared which is 4d squared which means uh, you'll get this as the final answer so the correct answer for this question will be option c so yeah that was it for this video guys if you enjoyed please do like share and subscribe and that's it thanks for watching